That's not how this episode started, that's for sure. Even though Dahlia will likely feel horrible about it because she didn't appear to see how difficult he is with her, this looks like a nice step, considering how this person was acting with her. I hope he'll treat someone with whom he is genuinely in love with respect. Why can't I recall something about the new house they built together? Hoa, I think I recall them building something next to the huge tower home that she and her father used to reside in. I assume that's not the case. Well, given the abrupt discussion about how the female is a noble, making fun of her with the bed and brooch, perhaps he's actually being duped by a devious girl or something. You know, I seem to recall reading in the episode 1 thread that this show is essentially an adaptation of a side story. And thus far, every episode has seemed a little like a roller coaster ride on what the program will genuinely be about when all the setup is over. More than anything, it seems like the major attraction her abrupt decision to go undercover as a man, with an entirely other VA. But as of right now I most definitely don't know. It seems as though Tobias never genuinely desired to wed Dahlia. From that perspective, he isn't quite as horrible as he appears, he simply handled everything in one of the worst imaginable ways and with terrible horror. Dahlia also doesn't appear to be too affected by it. She clearly never truly loved him. It certainly seems as though they were acting in their dad's and business's best interests. Breakups are also seldom tidy and orderly. It is not a negative consequence if they resolve the matter at the guild and divide the inheritance fairly in accordance with the contract. Although she can't enjoy the house right now, she has the means to purchase a new one, and she doesn't have many pleasant memories from that one. It's unfortunate that they did that small-time act, but it's not as if they put a spike under her fingernail. She will survive. At least she can travel back in time to enjoy tinkering in a comfortable setting at the tower. When I realized that the events of episode 2 had occurred two years ago, my first emotion changed to grief. I'm overjoyed that he was able to return to her previous state. Additionally, it seems that Dahlia has been too preoccupied with managing the trade firm during those two years to pursue her passion of creating magical gadgets. Like Dahlia in this episode I am, I'm just so exhausted and want it to be finished. Sincerely, I don't even care to find out or observe what Tobias did, get him off the show please. Not to be nasty but I was really expecting this program would take a more slice of life, globe-trotting approach. While there was a lot of attention on the attractive night love interest with a strong family heritage and a tendency toward romanticism, I was expecting for more of that with Saint's magic is omnipotent. Again, I'm not criticizing that program but I had hoped Dahlia would bring something fresh to the table. However, we then meet a dashing night love interest who comes from a wealthy family, LOL. I won't give up on this program just yet, but I truly hope that we spend more time focusing on Dahlia leading her own life, putting her friends first, traveling and honing her skills before concentrating on romance. Really, all I want is an Arya but Isekai, even though I realize that's a high bar. Dahlia, it's better not to be stuck in life with a poisonous guy. But what a piece of garbage. I hope he gets the word around town and is shunned by everyone. I detest dishonest people. The least he has to pay for severing ties. But such a disgusting douche. Fortunately, she is surrounded by kind people. Well done for her for putting her attention toward other things that bring her joy or that matter to her. Yep, back to her natural hair color and all that. No more domineering, poisonous douches. It sounds like a voice you recognize. It's a wise move to take precautions like that. She also raised red flags. Ooh, that guy. I'm curious what he was battling. Obviously, why Halo is someone we won't be seeing a lot of. I could relate to Tobias' complete lack of decency in abusing Dahlia, gaslighting her, and then cheating on her all while claiming the house for himself, because my sister was treated similarly by her previous brother-in-law. But I'm so happy Dahlia is no longer with that jerk. Even more absurd is Tobias's behavior in pretending that Dahlia was harmed by the divorce, and that he had to apologize. I assure you, nobody will miss your insecure, worthless ass. However, how can you tell your mistress that you would relocate her into the home when you are well aware that you are unable to pay for Dahlia's share of it? I never imagined that a notary would be engaged in an anime divorce to ensure that Dahlia's removal of all items from the house was documented legally. With this, they were becoming far too real today. Thank you to Dominic for assisting Dahlia in returning to her father's old home, which is quite poetic. Had her father known the nature of the assault, he would have demanded that she return home immediately. It was painful to see her criticize herself for being a bad wife unfortunately, no matter how kind you are to someone, it won't make them decent. I'm glad she soon snapped out of that. I will now express my preferences and dislikes going forward. 
Go girl, rebirth arcs are our jam. Any man who is so insecure that he makes you modify your appearance is not worth your time, as Irma mentioned. It's difficult to hold him responsible for ending a blatantly unloving engagement that was arranged by their parents, but truly he couldn't have handled it any worse. I feel that it would have been better if he had been rude about it, rather than just plain cowardly. I value Dahlia's and those around her careful attention to detail during this entire process, including obtaining her money, making notes, obtaining receipts, and getting everything notarized. That plus the fact that the guild clerks accidentally overheard the events give the impression that they are obstructing Tobias's path out of any potential consequences for his own acts. When he finds out, it should be entertaining to see. The guild woman is correct, of course Dahlia has won big time. Rejection stings, no doubt, but it's encouraging to watch her get over it quickly and even start enjoying herself. Because he was the official apprentice or whatever, I was a bit worried that Dahlia's ex would be able to take advantage of her father's business and win the divorce. However, the only thing that saved him is that he was too dumb to pull off something like that. Rather, he was forced to make large restitution payments and is now in debt for even more, and he even ruined his image with the town's business community, many of whom were obviously supporting Dahlia in the course of events. Since they used a dye, I'm delighted we were able to swiftly restore her original hair color, or at least a close match. Dahlia went off to gather in the wilderness, picking up a whole man by herself. Additionally, he is a minor noble, which may come in handy if the ex's new partner makes any further attempts. The fact that he forced Dahlia to modify her look and then had the audacity to move into her new home with his skank enrages me even more. Similar to what the real fuck. Dahlia is surrounded by friends who encourage her, thank heavens. I particularly adore the vice chair of the Trades Guild, who casually threatened Tobias when he disclosed that he was unable to reimburse Dahlia for the entire cost of the house. She will probably be my favorite, in my opinion. Dahlia does, therefore, recall her former existence. Her Dahlia space led me to believe last week that she was just recalling abstract concepts and thoughts. As she grew older, I imagined she ended up remembering more. It's great to see Dahlia with her bright red hair once more, since that Tobias is no longer in her life. It appears that she could have recently encountered her true love. But in this instance, it was she who came to his rescue. However, Dahlia is now disguising herself as a guy, so unless Wolf is interested in romance, I don't think it will happen right away. I adore how she even altered her voice, lending Dahlia's man voice to Yamashita Daiki, alias Izuku Midoriya. And based on how the story ends, I predict she won't be able to enjoy her single status for very long because her Prince Charming just showed up in front of her wagon. She is undoubtedly more optimistic than Tobias, who will probably spend the remainder of his miserable life being played around, 